Hey, so the last video that you hopefully watched was me talking you through the board behind me and how I could deliver a full lesson from that board. What I want to go into today is jumping into Notion on the laptop again to show you how I actually put that together, how I put that lesson together, built it in Notion and how you can do that too, no matter what your subject is and what, what topic you're teaching. You're watching Notion for Teachers. I'm Andrew. Hit subscribe and the bell icon and you'll not miss any of my videos. I'm dropping every single week helping you build that Notion workspace that supports you rather than you working for your own workspace. Okay, we're going to jump into Notion really, really quickly and I'm going to show you how I built the lesson on the board behind me so that you can see how you can maybe put it together for your subject and for your students and to meet the requirements that you want to deliver against for your lesson, all right? So let's jump into Notion now and I'll show you exactly how we built it. Okay, so here we are in Notion, in my today's lessons dashboard. And really what I want to do now is come in here and I want to plan my first lesson for after half term. So. I'm going to choose this 4C on the 6th of June 2022. I'm going to open that particular lesson, open as page, and I'm going to come right straight down to the bottom. Let's make that straight down to the bottom. I'm going to come straight down to the bottom. I'm going to say, right, create new page. And this page will be my lesson plan. All right. Full width, and I could come in here and very, very quickly add a nice icon and add a nice cover image. And if I was really worried about it, really wanted to impress the kids, I could change those cover images to be whatever I like. Okay, some nice inspiring image or some nice inspiring message. And my maths not in there, so uh, that'll do for now. Okay, but really the meat of this lesson plan is what goes in to below my title. Okay, and the first thing uh, you'll have seen if you watched my last video was that the um, I set myself a few key reminders up at the top. So we're going to stick a toggle in here, a little toggle list, and we'll toggle that open, and we're going to call that reminders. Okay, and we'll change that to a nice. So I definitely want to remember this. So I'm going to highlight it nice and red so I remember to come in here. And I want to um, remember my register. So I would be setting that as, and I could control K that. So I've just highlighted it, hit control K and link this to the web page of my um, register uh, platform. So whatever it is, my school, it's on ISAMS, you'll have a different way of taking the register to your school. That is your, um, that's where you'd stick that. And the only other thing I might want to link in there is some nice resources. So I come up here and I'd be like, Dr. Austin Maths, brilliant maths website. And maybe there's some of these resources that I particularly want to use in today's lesson. I grab or copy and paste the web address, drop it in there, and click Create Embed. And we're going to be doing that quite a lot today. But here we go. That is now creating an embed of that website. And really, when we think about it, that option to create an embed like that in our Notion page we can have that full page there, almost like full functionality of that web page. I can even go to different pages within that web page on my Notion page whilst having my reminder of the register immediately above it and maybe some other lesson resources below it. That is so powerful when we really think about it. So I just love this so much. And yes, it might take up a lot of my real estate on the page now. You might not want that there the whole lesson. Simple. You just go up to our toggle during the lesson, hit the little down arrow, it's disappeared, it's gone, isn't it? Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at is creating our little starter and do now section of the lesson. So to do that, I'll hit my uh, forward slash, start tighten toggle, and that'll give me some toggle options. I can go for toggle list or toggle he headings. Okay, we're going to, because this is a, a key section, of the lesson, I'm going to give that a toggle heading three, starter slash do now 
section of a lesson that is. And again, I'm going to embed an, another great resource uh, in there. Uh, Maths whiteboard. It's just superb for retrieval practice. And I can have this, that web address dropped in there as an embed, like this, create embed. And I use this every single lesson now. So that is now embedding into this Notion page. And there we have it. Nicely set up in there. Uh, and I then created a retrieval section block on my page. Um, and I want to link to a linked view of a database. I want to create a linked view of a database. So this database of my um, with my retrieval practice details in it already exists elsewhere in my system. I just want to now create a linked view of that and it is of my period by period planner and I know for example I want to on this particular page I always want to know lessons that I've taught to um, is within and I don't want it between particular dates I want this to be for a particular class over the past few months so that I can then do some retrieval practice as my starter. So I would say, why not say that in the past month, okay, that should work, okay. And so I'm gonna create a filter, which shows me my class, and it's class 4C. So it's only lessons that I've taught to class 4C within the past month and it's year period. Uh, sorted by year period so that these lessons are all definitely in chronological order. And the only bits I'm really interested in of this database are the topics that I taught and maybe the date of the lesson. So what I'll jump into, I'll jump across to my properties and I'll hide them all, hide all the properties. And I know it's already filtered to 4C, so I don't need to display that. What I am interested in is seeing the topic that was teaching and also maybe seeing the date of the lesson. So full date, that'll work. Okay, and superb. Right, I can now, should be able to pull this up to the side. Oh, okay, some of these columns can be a bit tricky to work around, all right? And this is a case where it's not gonna let me pull that view of my period by period planner up alongside my starter exercise straight away. So what I will do instead is to create a toggle below that. Toggle heading three again. Okay, and I will pull that with these toggles. Uh, so I've given that retrieval practice toggle a name. That's toggled away. I will close that toggle. Oh, so the issue here is that that retrieval practice toggle was actually inside. Now I've taken outside the previous toggle. So it should now be able to see that. And if I now have these two toggle blocks, one underneath the other, I can grab the six dots and pull it up alongside. Perfect alongside my starter do now toggle. So by creating a, a toggle below the other, I can then grab the, the lower toggle and bring it up alongside in, to allow me to create two columns on the page in a way that it wouldn't allow me to create that if it was just the databases. So now if I open up the starter do now toggle and the retrieval practice toggle, there's nothing in the retrieval practice toggle we wouldn't expect it to be yet, but what I should now be able to do is to drag my period by period planner for the my group 4C up to the right hand side and there we have it. We now have our um, retrieval practice web app there on the page and we can make that the same size so it all matches up alongside our retrieval practice view of the period by period planner. So now in the lesson, I'm able to go ahead, jump in here and choose the topic that I taught a month ago, topic that I taught a week ago, 
last period and maybe one other or however I want to do my star activity for the lesson. But it's all set up there and it's on the page. Something that is nice to do is to maybe to give these blocks a quick colour just to break up the page visually a little bit. So I'll maybe at this stage just choose one. Grey background, cool. Grey background, sort it. Okay. And that is it. Right, so what we now want to do is to create, so that's our reminders and our start and retrieval practice section of the lesson plan sorted. We now want to go on down to the new learning section. What are we actually going to be teaching the kids in this particular lesson? Well, if I'm replanning my um, circle theorems lesson again, I'm going to create another toggle. Toggle heading three is the way I'm going with this. And it's new learning. And I'm gonna go up here and I know I've got a GeoGebra app. G O G E B R A. Alternate segment theorem. There is the link to that alternate segment theorem section. And I can drop that link in there. Again, just create the embed. Notion does its thing. It creates this view of that particular website. And there, when we're in the lesson, then we can grab those bits and do our explanation on the board. Superb. Right, one thing to note at this stage is that that block is not the full, at the moment, that block is not the full width of the page. But given that this is the only thing we're going to be talking about at that stage of the lesson as I would plan it. I would like it to be full width, so all I now need to do is to drag it out and down below the columns which are above it, and there we have it. We have a nice separation between the star do now and retrieval practice and the new learning section, the new learning section which does cover the full width of the page. All right, and one thing we know at that stage is that I can still even jump in there and tell it to go full page. All right, at that stage of the lesson, and then when we hit escape to go back to the normal size screen, it takes us back into the Notion page, all right? Now, we do have a bit of a gap there, which I'm not particularly happy with, but it's not by no means f critical, is it? Why is that? Ah, okay. I have a few blocks dropped in here, which I couldn't actually see on the right-hand side of my screen. I'm just jumping in there and deleting those blocks. Control Z. And there we have it. Okay, so we've now got our starter, retrieval practice, and our new learning section of the lesson sorted. Next thing, we want to throw up some examples. So examples for students to practice with. So the way I'm going to do this, again, straight in, toggle, toggle heading three, examples. And for this one, I'm going to embed a PDF from Dr. Austin Learning. So jump in, geometry, circle theorems, alternate segment theorem, I'm going to copy the link address of that and I'll be able to drop that in there. Um, um, embed a PDF and I can embed the link of the PDF, embed the link and it's straight in there. Okay, we don't need it that wide obviously. But so that's our example set up on the page. And I created like an area on the screen, a white space on the screen that I would then be able to do some practice. We'll note that the way this screen, this is set up actually we can automatically have that white space on the screen. So we maybe don't need to even bother to actually create the block. The white space is already there. Um, I would freeze, that's the part of the, the previous video when I freeze the, 
the, the boards I could then draw on top of this particular section and that will work absolutely fine here. So let's just give this another colour again just to break up the screen a little bit and that works absolutely fine. I can display the exam the questions on the board. I can then display my working off to the right if the, in response to student questions. Okay, so moving on down, we'd want to display the answers. So previously what I was doing at this stage was forward slash type and toggle, just another way of generating another toggle since it's all toggles is just to duplicate. So if I click six dots, six dots, hit duplicate or just hit control plus D, that will create the same block again. And we would want to update that to be answers and to change the address, uh, replace that current PDF, because we're now looking for the answers, replace that PDF with the answers, alternate segment theorem, copy that link address, drop it in here, embed the PDF. There's PDF now displayed with the answers for that exercise. So at that stage of the lesson, once students have had a go at the practice, they can jump in here and see their answers on the board. All right, and the only other thing then, last bit of the lesson is our plenary when we wanted to display some exam questions. So for this one, I'm going to jump in here, forward slash toggle again, toggle heading three, and I call it plenary. And this was exam queue, if I remember correctly. Yeah, exam queue. EXAMQ, cool, that's the web address, control C, that's all we need. We'll drop it in, create the embeds. Okay, so that's that page dropped in. Now it'd be nice to have the answers on the board, display so students can check their work and while, once they've done that, they can go straight on to practice in this exam question. So I want the answers and the plenary side by side on the screen. And that's what I've done there. I've just dragged that block up. Okay, and maybe we'd drag that across there just to give the exam questions a bit more space. And this is where during the lesson we would come in here uh, and go circle theorems. There's our circle theory exam questions. We could choose one. Still leave that on the board, students give it a go. As the students are finishing up the, the end of the lesson, we jump in there, we show them the mark scheme for it and they can mark themselves. Okay, and just for consistency, maybe change the color of that. Okay, so that is your lesson plan. Okay guys, I hope that was super useful. There you have it, how I put together a lesson which I can run entirely in Notion, never having to jump out of it, never having to uh, jump between apps. Notion allows me to design that space to perfectly suit the needs of my students and my classroom. I hope that was super useful. You've been watching Notion for Teachers. I'm Andrew. Hit subscribe and the bell icon and you'll not miss any of my videos where I'm supporting you every single week to build that workspace that supports you rather than you working tirelessly to support the admin and everything else that comes with being a teacher. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again next week.